How did the Warriors beat the Rockets? Should we be concerned about Steph Curry? Is this the end for the Cavs? The only question left is, say it with me, you win. Hey sports fans, Coach Nick here and welcome to the B-Ball Breakdown live show slash podcast slash NBA discussion. As always, I am Coach Nick of B-Ball Breakdown and I'm joined by Dave Dufour at Dave Dufour NBA uh, to talk about this this game we just saw. So Dave, uh, Warriors and Rockets, game one. What are your thoughts so far? Uh, this is exactly what I expected to happen. Um, I, I, I actually was surprised that Capella was able to stay on the court as long as he was able to. Mm-hmm. Um, I did not anticipate Draymond and Iguodala having the foul trouble that they had early. But then the third quarter happened, and we all know what the Warriors do in third quarters. So, uh, yeah, I'm not surprised. I still have the Warriors winning this in a sweep. Oh, wow. I forgot about that. Yes. That's a, you know, there was a moment there where I kind of felt that way too. And it's not that I'm some sort of biased Warriors guy or Homer or whatever, but what you saw with the Rockets and the way they decided to attack, and we've seen it before, where they will relentlessly attack what they perceive as the, wink, the weak link. Uh, in the defense. And obviously that is, you know, Steph Curry when you compare him to everybody else in that Hamptons five. But uh, eventually, and I tweeted this out like in the third, like if you do that this that many times in a row, they are going to figure it out. And you know what? Steph Curry is a good defender and he did make enough good plays at the right times where they can come out and get a nice shot down at the other end and break the game open a little bit. And that was all I need. Because I feel like these games are going to be decided by whoever blinks first, right? Like there's going to be a blink some point in this game, it's going to be a run, and that could be the, the game. It's over. And that's what happened in that third quarter. Absolutely. And, and uh, let's not over, you know, overlook the fact that Kevin Durant was a monster, mm-hmm. a monster in this game. He was fantastic. Um, and, that, and that was really the, the, the difference in the game early when things weren't going well for, for uh, Golden State. And, and, you know, Kevin Durant was, I mean, at one point he was like 10 out of 16 on twos. I, w- I, I lost count after that, stopped paying attention. Um, but, man, phew, he was good. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Steph, Steph was rough tonight. And, um, you know, the only, the only way he was really effective offensively was getting to the basket, which is, you know, it's just not bad. He was the only warrior who was consistently getting to the basket everyone else was getting open threes or uh or settling for those mid-range shots and when they're dropping who cares right well yeah but i don't think kevin durant settles for any of those mid-range shots those are layups for him basically that's right so uh and and again we we saw clay thompson get a couple mid-range so the warriors have revamped their offense to some degree this year and took a lot more mid-range because that's what was open more and i I don't care what you say when you're telling me about why the mid-range is not as efficient as a three pointer when you're talking about Kevin Durant and Clay Thompson and Steph Curry should, or CP3 should, or even Harden shooting those those are those are that value is as is it equal to a 3 as far as I'm concerned yeah and i mean Steph Steph was able to contribute in other ways um eight assists had, yeah i mean and and don't forget his rebounding i mean he he had a really fantastic box out on yeah. Gerald Green of all people um and and got a really it was kind of a crucial rebound so yeah it, it's uh you know draymond was amazing tonight defensively and uh I, I think that again man this is the best team ever assembled they're the best mm-hmm. like losing to them in a sweep is it, there's no shame in it you know and, and and you know not that we're there yet but i still am expecting it um and, and you know houston's gotta already feel pressure after losing game one, you know, at home, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, I, I I just think it's a wrap, man. Let's let's get it. Let's get to June. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, it, it was frustrating to watch uh, certain times where the Warriors had a chance to really step on their necks and put them out of their misery, and they would like just sort of screw around and turn the ball over. And they were, I mean, of course, when you have Scott Foster and um, uh, Tony Brothers refereeing, I don't know how they got this, the Western Conference versus the East, but man, they're terrible. And uh, they blew some calls tonight. They had a backcourt call uh, that was clearly uh, a backcourt call. Harden was nowhere near touching the ball before it went in the backcourt. And yet out of nowhere, Foster comes in there and blows the whistle and gives the ball back to the uh, Warriors. I'm sorry, they don't call it. And then, uh, and then they get a three-pointer off of that. And that was a huge swing. So 
So uh, there's a little, I, I, and I feel like that's going to be the same refereeing crew for the rest of the series. Am I crazy, or do they, they switch them up? I don't know. There was a while there where it felt like any close call they blew, and <laughs> that's not a good thing. Um, you know, uh, Trevor Ariza had five fouls in early in the third quarter, and you know, I think two or three of those just were terrible. One was really bad. The the one reach in on Steph that. That was not not a reach in. That was bad for sure. Uh, yeah. Some of the other ones the, were legit, enough, but but you're right. Yeah, but I mean, uh, the the call on Draymond on the foul on PJ Tucker was just a terrible call. Um, and then they got Draymond. Draymond delivered. Uh, it was a really clean screen. He got hit hard by Ariza, so his arms moved, and it and they called it. And that was a reputation call. It was yeah. a nice screen. I mean, it's a hard screen, but he, you know, he didn't lean into it or anything. So. Well, there was a little bit of upward arm movements and a little bit of, you know, moving, but it was also in, to brace himself because the guy was running straight into him. That's when right. It hurt him. So, so that's it. Was you know, I think I tweeted that it was it was fifty percent uh, arms moving up a little bit and then sixty five percent reputation. So Draymond Green, yeah, yeah, and that's gonna be a problem. Now here's the other problem. Draymond started out completely on with uh, with no equilibrium. <laughs> And I would, he should have been he should have been thrown out at least because he got a tee early. That second tee should have come at least twice, maybe more. He was lucky, and and, and you know they, <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm not the type of person that that would ever like argue for a, a player to get a technical. Like I, I would rather the refs just kind of try to deal with it and you know like do whatever you can. As long, you know if he's not spitting on someone or fighting somebody, yeah. I want those guys in the game, right? Like. Anybody arguing for for a you know guy to get ejected or I mean uh, unless it's egregious, um, yeah. but Draymond yelling at the referees that's I mean it just doesn't bother me. So as long as it doesn't bother them, we're good. Like let's play oh, ball. I don't know. I feel like there's that affects the team too. I feel like when he's like that, when it's overboard, he was bad in the yeah, first quarter. Yeah. yeah, and then he settled in right. Right, and by uh, the way, he was probably the best player on the court. I mean, aside from Durant. I mean, if you look at his numbers, he only scored five points, but he had nine assists and nine rebounds and had the biggest plus minus on the team, plus 19. His, his defense, man. Like, I mean, he had he had some just fantastic blocks. Uh, the real the clincher, the uh, blocking P.J. Tucker on that three toward the end, mm-hmm. had a nice block on Nene, although he probably got away with a little bit of contact there. Yeah, but, uh, and he also broke up a, a lob uh, at least once, if not twice, which yeah. is big because now you can see like Harden's got to think about it a little bit. And uh, and then, by the way, they blew another lob to Capella that was over the rim, I believe. Did you see that one? They didn't really show a yeah. great replay. But, you know, you can't just put it over the rim. you got to throw it to the side where a guy dunks it. And uh, he literally, he just dropped it straight through. We saw, I think it's the third time I've seen this playoffs, and only once they actually call it. So maybe that's the yeah. thing. I don't know. Well, so... Uh... What else is going on since this is a wrap? <laughs> I don't know. Well, you know what? Let's just go through a couple of comments and get, interact with some of the fans uh, who are in the chat right now. So yeah, I have a beard game going. Yes, uh, for sure. Whoever mentioned that in the uh, comments. There it is. Uh, Belly Jed or Rogi. B-ball. I went beard. Uh, yeah. And we're all back. And by the way, I'm really excited to be back. We're going to do this every night after each uh, of the uh, the uh, f- conference finals That's games. Right. So we got to get back into into the groove. Yeah. So we're gonna and we're gonna do lives on YouTube as well. Tonight we're not going to do like they just released my oh I just released a video on the uh, Celtics and the Cavaliers game one. Uh, do we want to um, quickly yeah, go let's through talk that? About that? Yeah. Let's talk about that briefly, uh, just because we missed it. Um, I, <sighs> Impressive performance by the Celtics. Jalen Brown, once again, continues to impress. And I've been saying this now for like a year and a half. I think that guy is a superstar. He's going to be a superstar. I think he's got like top 15, top 20 player type of potential. Wait, I think you spelled Jason Tatum wrong. Oh, uh, okay. Um, (laughs) I I would take Jalen Brown over Jason Tatum to be a star. Um, Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. I mean, listen. I'm not, I like gonna, I'm not going to argue that. I'm not going to yeah. argue that really. But um, right. but that's that, that's the situation the Celtics are in, right? They are sitting, they are sitting in a situation that we, you know, they, they'll be the team we're talking about next year, or maybe this year. Yeah. Who knows? A ton of value, man. Um, but uh, I thought I thought the game plan was super solid. You know, they went at Kevin Love early. Um, I, I think they're going to have. I think Cleveland's going to have to start Tristan Thompson, which which probably means that. Boston counters by playing Baines those minutes to, to keep uh, Thompson off, off of Horford. But Horford, I mean, you, you can't guard Horford with Kevin Love. 
So I don't I don't know what how Cleveland counters that. So uh, it's it's going to be funny, man. I'll tell you, Ty Lue d- has done a good job of sticking to his guns when he when he actually needed to, and trusting the math on some of this stuff. But the math, I mean, and the math says play Tristan Thompson more right. against Boston. So uh, yeah, and like so, the video I did was basically focusing on how they defended LeBron, and the, the, the argument has been, and we've talked about it a little bit, but in the past is, you know, do you simply let LeBron get his points and you shut down everybody else? I don't think you can do that. I don't think that's a viable strategy against this team because he, again, like we said, the first team to blinks can lose the game. And LeBron can just go on his own run and end the game for you in the third quarter. So they did a really great job because obviously what do the Celtics want to do? I mean, the Cavs want to do. They want to attack uh, with Rozier. They want to somehow force. And by the way, it was a really interesting comparison to what the Rockets were doing. Exactly the same thing, right? The Rockets and the Cavaliers are playing the same offense. Screen and roll the force to switch and then attack that with an ISO. Um, and the, the Celtics just did a great job of being able to rotate and shadow and help and not let him just go one-on-one there. Um, they did not double when Morris was guarding him, which is interesting too. No help at all there. Morris hey, had to go by himself. Marcus Morris just told us all, aside from Kawhi Leonard, he's the best at guarding LeBron. And, and who am I after a game like that to, uh, to say he was wrong? Oh, I agree. And the other thing is, um, because I, quite, let's, let's be honest here, LeBron doesn't like contact, Right. He's not a guy who likes to be physical, you know. I, I think I think he likes to be physical, but he's not used to guys being able to be physical with him. So Marcus Morris, he has the the size and he has the strength to be able to actually sit there and bang a little bit with LeBron, and that that size and strength and and the banging, I, I think that that is so rare for a guy to be able to do that with against LeBron that it can throw him off of his game a little bit. Look, LeBron's going to come out and score 40 in, in game two. And one reason LeBron can score and pass so well is because of his superior vision. And if you need contact lenses to help you with your own vision, then you must check out Simple Contacts. They live up to their name because you simply download their app, take a five-minute vision test, and a real doctor reviews your test and writes you a new prescription. No more dreary waiting rooms or walking around half blind with everything looking orange. Simple Contacts brings the doctor's office to you and offers every brand of lenses at unbeatable prices. The prescription is just 20 bucks and shipping is free. Best of all, you can save 30 bucks off your first Simple Contacts order by visiting simplecontacts.com slash coach Nick or enter my code coach Nick at checkout. While this isn't a replacement for your periodic full eye health exam, you'll be hitting shots and throwing whip passes to cutters better than ever with the help of Simple Contacts. That's simplecontacts.com slash Coach Nick. How do we, what do we explain? LeBron was like detached LeBron to me. That's what I called him in the video. He was just not there. He, I mean, by the third quarter when he realized they weren't going to maybe make a run, he was just, uh, just not there. He was checked out. I wonder how you explain that, you know, in a game one like that. Um, I don't know. I, I just think it's it's a case of, you know, this is a guy who's who's been there before. I mean, he's been there a lot of times, right? So, um, you know, it's it's easy to pack it in. Uh, you mean it's easier. Uh, okay, so it's kind of like in tennis, you're down 5-2, just give away the set and come back for the second set. That's, that's, the, right. that's the idea? Yeah, don't waste the energy yeah. uh, on something that's kind of, you know, pointless and, and, you know, then bring it back in game two. Hopefully you figure something out, which it's LeBron James. He's, you know, this probably the smartest basketball player we've ever seen. He's definitely figured some things out from that game and he's going to come back and he'll, you know, right. He'll, he'll have an amazing game too. And by the way, they won't shoot four for 27 from three either. Absolutely. Um, you know, I would say of those 20 some misses, there were about, I don't know, eight or nine at least that were like just open, right, you know, and they'll, they should make three or four of those. Now, again, it does not make up a difference. You, you know, that doesn't alone. Now, does LeBron going for 40 then get the gap? Yeah, it gets a lot closer, but that means it's going to be a close game. And LeBron going for 40 and then shooting better from three, um, you know, that's just not a great recipe for a, for a long seven-game series, right? Like, you know, I feel like if that's only going to be, you know, like, again, let's just say those two things happen. Do the Cavs win, A, what do you think, Dave? In game two? Yeah. LeBron, go, LeBron goes for 35, shoots pretty oh, well. They yeah, no, I, I think the Cavs are definitely going to win game two. Okay, by how much? 
I, I would ex- I would assume it's going to be like 15 points at least. Wow. Okay. I yeah. think it'd be a close game either way. They're they're on the road. Um, you know, th- there is a great game plan that the uh, that the Celtics have. They're going to get extra points from those out of bounds plays and ATOs. Um, you know, so I would anticipate it being close at the very least. So that's the issue. If they play really well and it's a close game, they eke it out. Then I'd be concerned for the Cavs. The Cavs, yeah, I think that they need to do is what you were describing. Is like they need to make that statement and come back and win soundly. It, it, I will say this, um, I, you know, I picked Cavs in six. I, it would make me very nervous for my prediction if the Cavs lose game two. Sure. I mean, it would, uh, whew, that would I, be something. I mean, the, the odds of the team, you know, once they win the first two games at home, the, they, it must be 80% they win the whole series. Like, something like that, I bet, right? Yeah, it's, I mean, whatever it is, it's not good for the, the Oh, did we lose you? No, I'm here. Okay, good. It's yeah. not. Yeah, whatever. I, we missed the last little <laughs> sentiment, but basically, it was it's not good for the road team. So that's absolutely no, right. It's not. No. So let's see here. Uh, let's go through some of these comments and see what we have here. You can jump up some some ideas. Uh, Draymond should have been thrown out. Absolutely, we we thought that same thing too. Keaton, uh, can we discuss Scott Foster? Well, we kind of discussed him, I guess, but do we want to expand upon Scott Foster? I mean, the no. guy the guy has been terrible, you know, since he's been in the league. Um, yeah, is, he is, pump faked a, a jump ball. You know, I missed that. I was like behind. And I was trying to catch up, so I only got it right after they throw the ball. What yeah. was that about? I saw it later. Why are you pump faking a a, uh, a jump he, ball? Yeah, he pump faked a jump ball. I, I mean, you know, it is what it is, man. Like, I I've been very de- like I've defended the referees a lot, right? Like the, the microscope is is bigger, and it's hard to make these calls and all this stuff. I think the NBA this summer is going to have to look at adding a fourth ref. I just think it's going to have to. They're going to have to do it. Have you heard about that at all? Have they talked about it? Yeah, well, they've they've tried it. They 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 tried it in G League, and you know, I mean, I, I think that they're going to do that. I, I think they're going to have to talk about it. Huh? These these calls have been so bad and so high profile, um, and and I don't think there's more bad calls. I think we're just more aware of the bad calls. Um, and, and I think that, you know, from an optic standpoint, you know, they're going to have to add, you know, 15 jobs and, huh. and hire, you know, they're, they're going to need more people. I would, I just, my argument tends to be, they just need to be trained better. I feel like there's a training aspect to it as well. Uh, that would help. Um, but I, I don't know. I mean, four is interesting because it, that changes the, the geometry, uh, a lot. I, mean, I guess, yeah, you're just going to have every, every corner covered. Mm-hmm. Um, interesting. Well, we'll have to see about that. Now, Draymond on defense is game-changing from Quinn Better. Now, I've been on Twitter a little bit this past week talking about Draymond being potentially the best defender of all time. And I've had, you know, some people, you know, agree with me. Other people, you know, here's the thing. The reaction to that shouldn't be what I've gotten, which is like you don't know anything about basketball. Right. Right? <laughs> yeah. You know, okay. No, you it should throw be more out, like yeah. the MJ-LeBron debate where it's like, well, that's interesting. I just disagree. Right. You could throw out like two or three other names if you like. But the bottom line is, I mean, listen, Bill Russell never really went out on the perimeter to guard people. And it's not his right. fault. He didn't do it. Uh, you know, and who else are we talking about? Rodman did, did it to some degree, but he never. Rodman's probably the closest, I would almost say. Yeah, he to didn't him. have the rim protection that Draymond has. Yeah. So this is So you and I have a similar debate when we talk to other people about this, because I think Draymond's the best defender in, in the league because he's so good and versatile. Yeah. So, you know, like Kawhi Leonard is, is in theory at least, the best perimeter def- defender in the league. Right. But he doesn't bring the rim protection no. that Draymond does. So I, I And just he's not think a quarterback that, like that either. Exactly, exactly. And, and so, you know, I, I think that that's one of the things that, that it's, it's easy to overlook if you're, if you're a little bit more of a casual observer. But you and I are not that. And so, like, we're looking at the deeper stuff when this guy is playing out there playing defense, like how important he is, not just when he gets switched on to a guy and guarding, but to the, the defense as a whole. I mean, like you said, he quarterbacks the defense. He, as the, as the, uh, as the help rim protector, I mean, he's just amazing. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I think he's um, – and, and all right on cue, someone said Draymond Green is versatile, question mark. LMAO, right? Like, so this guy, whoever this, I want my vision, clearly doesn't watch basketball or is a moron. Or he needs more Um, vision. Yeah. Let's not get into calling people. No, but, you know, it's, but this is, but this is what I mean, right? Like, so clearly this person, this dismissive person 
doesn't actually know what he's talking about. And, and this is what I feel like is part of the issue with the Twitter debate, right? Like you, you run into a lot of people that actually don't know what they're talking about. Well, you know what it's also... They don't like Draymond. Well, it's also specifically about defense. The most vociferous arguments I tend to get and the ones that are really like nasty at me are almost always around defense. Like, and, and that's the thing that I feel like people must play basketball at whatever level they play at and just assume that whatever they learn on defense is like what the best defensive players also learn and they right. know it. And that's also, it's just so strange to me because I thought, you know, okay, let's talk about the way, you, the way the step back on the hard end or this and that, whatever. I get it. But like the defensive arguments I get are so um, just way off. Way right. off base a lot of the time, and the, and the Draymond reaction is is right there. And I've done a video, and I'll I know it's gotten a, sh- a ton of views. Uh, maybe I'll have to do another video and update it because uh, explaining why I mean it was the, why he's the best defender in the world, and I might even just go crazy and say he why he's the best defender of all time. Um, and just I, let, throw let's it out talk there. really quick about defense. So Kevon Looney tonight, I thought was he guarded Harden about as well as you can, and Harden was cooking. Okay, cooking. But, but, yeah, I think that Kevon Looney did a pretty good job. The, the number one thing is that you go into guarding James Harden, no fouls, no freebies. Make him earn it. He was hitting, that, he was hitting the step back. Um, they had that crazy miscommunication with Curry and KD, and he had the wide-open three to start the game. Mm-hmm. Um, but Kevon Looney, I thought, did a really good job. And, and not just on, on Harden, where, yeah, Harden was still scoring. I mean, he was great when he was switched on to Chris Paul and any of those other guys. Nobody was getting past him. Right. Harden was getting past him, but, but Looney was making him work to get there, and that's half the battle. So people too often, I think, focus on the results and not the process. It, defense is all about process. Like you, you have very, like, all the time we see, like, Kyrie Irving does 50 dribble moves on a guy and hits a tough, contested fadeaway, and people start saying, oh, well, Kyrie Irving cooked that dude. No, that dude defended his tail off, and Kyrie Irving had a tough shot. And right. that's just how it is sometimes. Yeah, we saw Steph Curry do that a little bit. I mean, Steph Curry got roasted. Let's not let's not beat around the bush. No, he, he did. He yeah. was getting blown by way too easily, and there were times when he was just like reaching and getting out of position on his own accord. Uh, and then there, then there were the times when he just played the position, kept him out of the lane, made him take a really tough step back, eighteen footer that he made. Whatever. That that's exactly what you're talking about. You want to stick to the yep. principles. Uh, and you can't get upset or frustrated when that happens because you you know deep down that like okay I did what I needed to do and that's exactly what he, the shot he wants to take. You're right, Looney got scored on a bunch. You know he did, uh, and he got beaten. He tried to recover, but again, uh, he is that that center off the bench that they've been looking for since Festus Azili. You know, and they hadn't been able to get that that you know steady presence from him. So they're they're lucky that they have a guy like Kevon Looney come off the bench and 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 do those minutes and play well. Uh, and and that's the thing. The Warriors actually they weren't. They weren't. They didn't play as well as they could, right? Would you say that? Oh yeah, no, they definitely. No, this was this was not the like peak Warriors. Um, right. So that's the worry. Got, yeah. Game two could be peak Warriors after this. I remember a long layoff, and now they have they got some uh, their rhythm back. And it's, the schedule is now going to be weird because after game two on uh, Wednesday, there's like no games. They don't play till Sunday. Why? Yeah. Why do they do this? <sighs> I don't. I mean, they're trying to fix the schedule. I guess. Um, I don't know. I think it's I, because like, the other, yeah, all the other series were so early. Uh, they finished so early, right? That they kind yeah. of had holes to fill. Um, but yeah, it's weird because yeah, we're gonna have this long layoff in the middle of the week, Thursday, Friday. Well, I guess Thursday, Friday. But still, that's weird. Yeah. Let me let me ask you. Um, are you worried about Curry's knee? I don't think he looks right. No, he doesn't look right. That's, you know, that's my other thing on my notes. He, he, this is not the Curry that we know and love, uh, right? He's not moving yeah. the way he would normally do. And he, you know what? He's effective. And look, he, he did what he needed to do. But no, he is not moving anywhere near. I, what is it? I, I would say he's not even, was he 70%? I don't know. I mean, so the step back, that was, that was one of the things that I noticed. He would go for the step back and he just wasn't getting his normal separation. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Steph Curry's step back is every bit as dangerous as Harden's. And, and, you know, he just he just wasn't getting that burst, wasn't getting the speed that he normally has for that step back, which creates separation. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah, it was a, he did not look right. And I wonder how much of that has to do with, you know, how he struggled defensively, the, the reaching, the, the, the off-ball shoving on the screens and stuff, trying to, trying to be more physical to make up for whatever's going on with his knee. Um, but yeah, he didn't look right. And, uh, you know, I, I think the Warriors need to be a little bit worried. 
I mean, yeah. they're they're vulnerable when he's not one hundred percent. And I don't I don't think he's going to be one hundred percent in this playoff. So probably he's going to be probably the same as, as last time. They're good. By the way, they're good enough, I think, to still do it. But um, and and I suspect with knee problems, you know, some games might be better than others, and he'll have moments where we'll see, and then everyone's going to say, "Look, his knee isn't hurt." But I think we understand that, yeah, there, there was some hesitancy there in the, some of those individual moves, and he got ripped uh, on a couple of those by, by uh, Capella. By the way, we mentioned him in the beginning, so, and Capella really was putting a big imprint on the game in the first half, yeah. uh, and they played him off the floor in the second. The, the one play where, where Steph, uh, he was kind of playing around with the ball a little bit too much. He had Capella beat, but didn't take the next step to get past him, yeah. came back, put the ball back, and then Capella gets the steal. Um, now that to me was, that was one of those healthy stuff takes that to the basket. So obviously there, I think there's a little bit of a confidence. That, well, um, but we'll see. Uh, I mean, he, they're uh, watching it, uh, after he sat for a little bit before he went back on the court, really working that knee, look like he had a little bit of a limp. Now I'm, I'm just hoping that this isn't another, basically, I, um, as an analyst, <laughs> It's very difficult to say, well, if Steph Curry was healthy, you know what I mean? It, it's yeah. tough. And it, it's one of those things from 2016 that I kind of get tired of talking about, but we can't act like it's not a thing. So. Sure. And here's the other thing about the, about, uh, the Capella. Capella is, my, is an X factor, in my opinion. The only way they're going to win is if he is having that kind of effect like we saw in the first half. And what we also saw was when they went small and spread – they can't beat them. They, the, the Warriors cannot. I mean, the, the Rockets, we saw moments where their offense, when they went five out and spread it, that, that's just like the Warriors, I think, will kill them in that because they know how to rotate. They know how to help and get back. We saw Draymond block um, Tucker in the corner on that exact kind of thing. Now, on that one, it did help that um, Ariza and CP3 were yelling at each other and standing on the lane line. <laughs> So like, you know, but still, I feel like when they try to do that five out spread, they're just standing around. That just plays right into the Warriors hands. And so that's why they need to have Capella in there and like and stick to like what that what what he brings. And if they can't do that and they feel like they have to yank him, then that's already the uh, problem for them. Yeah. Chris Paul had a weird game tonight, didn't he? Yeah, he was cooking, too, though. I mean, well, he had moments, but he disappeared for stretches. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and down the stretch was deferring quite a bit when he was. The, the main guy on the court. Now, there might have been a, a question if he got hurt, right? He yeah, was, I saw. Like, it looked like maybe he caught a knee to the quad or something. Yeah, something was bothering him. He looked like a, like a grimace or two there, and that, that, you know, could be it too, which would be devastating. I mean, like, you know, worse than if Curry was only 70%. Like, if, if CP3 isn't 90%, then they're really going to have a problem. So, um, yeah, it's, it's an interesting issue. I, again, I, I don't think they're going to sweep, but I think that this game one showed how most of these games should play out over the course of a seven-game series, and, you know, it doesn't spell – good things for the Rockets, but should we get some questions real quick while we're here? Yeah, let's do it. Put love on Baines, not hard. Okay, we're talking about love having to guard uh, Baines because he can't guard sure. Horford. Yeah, that's that would that would help. Uh, but, but then you've got Tristan Thompson trying to guard Horford in space. Yeah, that's not great either. And then on the other end, though, you know, that that, that poses issues. Tristan Thompson and love can pose some issues on, on the offensive end and uh, as well. But um, I don't know, man. Yeah, it doesn't feel good for the Cavs right now. Uh, serious question, Eric for Three Bang. Uh, should the NBA do something about the luxury tax? Ooh, that's interesting. Um, I mean, no. I think I mean they collectively bargain this. It makes a lot of sense that that you know I, I know what they're getting at. Essentially, what they're saying is that these super teams uh, shouldn't be able to be assembled. Well, remember they were able to do this, you know, because of the cap spike. Uh, which the league, you know, the, the players argued for and, and the league went along with. And, uh, you know, that's why we're here. Right. Um, but the point, the whole point of the CBA was to be able to keep teams together. So if you want to get rid of going over the cap, if you want a hard cap, which it, the NBA has a hard cap, but it's, you know, you have to, it takes a while to get there. It's really difficult. Yeah. Um, but the, the whole point is you can go above the salary cap to keep your team together and, now this is the team that they've got, and they and they did it according to the CBA, mm-hmm. and so now they're going to do whatever they have to to keep it together. I mean, and this team makes money, so um, you know, not just for the Warriors, but also for the league. Last year's finals was the most watched in twenty years, okay. so obviously it's good for the league. And I, you know, there's an argument to be made that these sort of dominating teams are when the leagues are at their healthiest. 
they they are compelling. Right. It's a thing okay. you want to watch. Okay. Fair enough. All right. Uh, let's see here. Uh, so Sporty Matt wants to, ask, wants to know, if, uh, do you think the Celtics will win the series against the Cavs? I think yes. I don't. You don't think so yet? I'm not there yet. All right. Easy 84. Notice how Kyle Corver isn't getting open threes this series. And that's right because he's got Jalen Brown guarding him who can go underneath the screen and like shoot the gap and then still be quick enough to get there right when he catches the ball and get a hand up. Uh, Kyle, got, he did get a three, at least one three in that mode where the guys were like right there and he still hit it. But uh, I think that's being a problem. So that, A, that's a problem on, on their end. But then if he's got to have to guard Jalen Brown, forget about it. Like that's going to be a big problem for them. The Cavs just don't have the defense. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Uh, let's see. LeBron is going to be aggressive game two. Yes. I got to shave. Uh, I don't know. What do you think? I, I kind of have been enjoying no, I think not you, shaving. Lean in. Lean in. I haven't gotten a haircut. I, have not, I haven't shaved. I'm, I'm going all out here to see what yeah, happens. Yeah, I've got the moving beard where I haven't, I haven't had time to trim it. You know? Yeah, right. So, yeah. Um, all right. Let's see. You see any questions out here? What's up with Kevin Love? Ever since he's had his panic attacks, he's been playing like trash. I don't think that's true. I think he's had a lot of good games uh, in the in the last series. Or against- I, well, it was the thumb. The thumb injury really oh, right, affected him quite a bit. And and then he had he had some great games against Toronto. The difference is that the Celtics are not going to let you get the same thing over and over and over again. Yeah. Toronto didn't adjust. Uh, James is James Eleven has the best question of the night. Thoughts on the Raptors? We haven't talked about them since Casey got fired. I feel bad for Dwayne Casey because I think Dwayne Casey's a good coach. Um, I thought he did a great job this year. And, you know, listen, is there any shame in not being able to beat LeBron James, you know, <laughs> to, to having a really great regular season team and then you just can't beat LeBron? Yeah, I asked Jerry Sloan. Right, exactly. I mean, it, he stuck yeah. it out. Yeah, <laughs> like but they, they, they weren't canning him because he couldn't beat Jordan. Well, but he gave them everything, everything within an inch of their life. Like they almost didn't make it out of both those series where it just wasn't happening. And I did a video on it. And uh, even though it was for game three, it was basically like why he got fired. I don't know. I don't think he's got that, that next level deep playoff uh, basketball sense. I, or I don't know what it is. They, they weren't prepared well enough. I didn't the in-game think. adjustments. In-game he, adjustments. He, they but even don't happen. They don't have those. They didn't have like they didn't, in the beginning of the game before like to prepare for the game itself. You know, like I, the, the dichotomy I showed in the video was okay. Here is how they're attacking the exact matchup they want. The Cavs. It's like a they're like surgeons. And then you go down and you watch what the, the Raptors are doing, and they're just sort of it, there. There was no purpose. They didn't seem to know exactly what they wanted to do. Now, part of that could have been out of the uh, this, this organic offense where they spread it and they want to you know drive and kick, but that doesn't that doesn't work. The whole reason why you play eighty two games is to understand how you make that how how you can force what you want out of that offense. You know, out of the read and react offense. How do you get okay? Now we now need to understand how then to do it. Now, perhaps it was because it was a new offense for him, and it just wasn't quite something he had complete mastery of. I don't know. But he's, he had, what, seven years there? Yeah. Yeah, he was there for a while. It was time. And by the way, it's, they, should trade, they should trade some players, too, while they're at it. Uh, good luck. <laughs> Who can they trade? DeRozan? Is he, is I think DeRozan is tradable. What's I'm his, not sure about Kyle Lowry. I mean, Kyle Lowry is making a lot of money. He's and, older. Uh, and he's older. Um, Ibaka, you probably stuck with him. You oh, might yeah. be able to move Valanciunas. Valanciunas was good. Um, offensively in the playoffs so uh you might be able to move Valanciunas but uh I think uh DeRozan's probably the only guy you can really move yeah I mean here's what they should move in a perfect world they should move Ibaka and they should move uh, yeah I mean I guess I'd say keep Lowry and get rid of DeRozan if I right. if you could do that but you're right it's like the contracts are an issue uh they'd have to eat something really bad uh in return because I like what they have going as far as o, uh, OG uh, Siakam uh Van Vliet um, I'm missing somebody. Uh, I even like Powell, who didn't play at all. Uh, he he had moments last year. Uh, oh, I like Pirtle. Yeah, they got a, they got something there. They're, you know, they're going to lose uh, Van Vliet this summer. Why? They don't. So he's uh, he's going to be a unrestricted free agent. Uh huh. And they don't have his bird rights, and they're over the cap. And oh, uh, yeah. that's too bad. Wow. Well, he's going to help somebody really right away. Yeah. Is he a starter? No, I think he's a high-level backup. Yeah. But then again, Kyle Lowry started his career the same way. It, to me, they're, they're kind of similar guys. I mean, um, both very stout. 
Oh, I, well, I, I actually, I, by the way, I thought that Lowry got a little too stout. He, did, he didn't look like he was in the same shape he had been last year, whatever that was, when he came in really cut. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, I don't think that, well, Van Vliet isn't as aggressive, right, as Lowry right. is. He's yeah. more of a, you know, the traditional point guard, right? Yeah. More of like yeah. that CP3 style. Right. Um, which I like, I kind of like better. So, I mean, I, that's why I would say I'd, I'd have Ambly play more. But, um, yeah, that's going to be interesting. I wonder where he's going to go. Uh, any other questions as we start to wrap this up? Anybody? Somebody wants to know if we can disable the comments. But that's the whole point. <laughs> uh, you know, we want yeah. <laughs> the comments. Um, live TV, anybody else? Can you help me understand why the Rockets kept trying to switch to Looney in every matchup? Well, it was it – was- they, they thought Looney was going to be a weakness. And, you know, when you've got Clay Thompson, Iguodala, Draymond, KD, and Looney. Yeah. Okay. But to go at Looney when Curry was on the court made no sense. Right. None. And, you know, on the floor, they were trying to get the – so this is what – I like, I, I thought Capella wouldn't be able to stay on the court uh, with the Warriors. And I, I'm – pleasantly surprised and I'm happy to, to have been wrong about it because I love Capella. I love watching him play. Um, but I knew that they were going to attack that matchup. They like that matchup with Curry and Capella trying to guard him in space. Um, and, and Capella did a great job. Even when he got beat, he would get back. You know, he had the one chase down uh, on on uh, on Curry. And and so he did a really good job of, of you know, moving with him and, and staying in the play. So, um yeah, but on the other end, I mean, Looney kind of did the same thing. The difference was, you know, that Harden, Harden really was cooking. I mean, God, he was just hitting some crazy stuff. So Yeah. Somebody wanted to know what you do to solve the uh, Ariza and Tucker getting the ball stuck in the corner with the ball, spherical badger. I mean, I think the reason why they're getting it is that it's supposed to be a shot, right? right. So that's, that's why they're there. That's when, when they, if the ball makes it as far as their hands, then it's probably going up. That's what they it's want. It's got to go up. So, um, but again, uh, that, I just feel like, yeah, there's, when they do that spread five out without Capella in there, it's, it just feels like it's as easy for them to guard. And uh, they're going to have to get back to more than 21 series and run more, you know, get hard and off ball coming around the handoff. And by the way, it's not like they need to have him score more and he didn't, or even more efficiently because the dude's, what was he, uh, 40 for 24 and 5 for 9 from 3. Um, but, and he, and he went to the line 10 times. It's almost like, yeah, I, I shouldn't even be criticizing what they did with Harden on offense because he had a perfect game. Um, but it, it, was, it was a long ways from getting him a win. So, Well, there's something to be said for getting your teammates involved. You know, if, yeah. if you're dribbling the ball for 20 seconds in the possession – you know, you and I have talked about this before, and, and you know, you you throw this pass to the guy who gets to touch the ball literally only as long as it takes him to get a shot up, and then he misses the shot. Mm-hmm. Well, it's hard for you, it, you know, it's hard to just be mad at that guy when he's not touching the ball. You know, like yeah. I think the basketball has some energy, and I think when everybody touches it, you get better offense that way. And and you know, this is one of my concerns coming into the playoffs, man. I, I worry about their predictable offense. I worry about. You know the isolation play, and that everyone's not involved, and this is toward the end of a long season. You know it, it's it's tough. Yeah. All right, let's do a lightning round. There's some good questions here at the very end. Let's do them in uh, ten seconds each. Does this series represent a league wide philosophical matchup? League wide league wide philosophical matchup. Uh, yeah, you got ISO versus uh, you know ball movement. Although the Warriors got caught up in that and started doing some ISO stuff, and that wasn't like, such a great look for them. Right. The only guy that had any success isolating was KD. Yeah. Do you think the Rockets need a ball-moving coach? Well, the irony is, is that D'Antoni is that, used to be, was that, has that, can do that. He is that man, right? So I think it's just a question of him get, co- doing some of that coaching stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think he's got to make some adjustments big time. Yeah. Who do you think the Sixers need? I'm going to say Paul George. Yeah, I agree. I think he'd be perfect there. Perfect. Also, I mean, yeah. Danny Green. Okay. Interesting. Uh, is Redick gone then? I don't know. I don't know if he's going to come back or not. You know what? Danny Green would be better for them. Uh, if he ever, does he, did he find his shot this year? Uh, so he, he started out really well. Then he had some, I don't know what happened. I think he had a little injury, and then he mm-hmm. came back, and it just never seemed to recover. He'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Are the OKC Thunder the only team that can guard the Warriors properly? Did the Warriors dodge a bullet? No. 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 I, I don't mean, think anybody can guard them. Yeah, I mean, Paul George could guard Kevin Durant as well as anybody, I imagine. But um, I think, I mean, certainly 
in my mind's eye he can. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, I mean, if you had what's his face, Robertson, yeah, Robertson, then then you have maybe you have something there. But I almost feel like the Warriors, uh, the Thunder's issue, the Thunder present most issues on the offensive end against the Warriors. Like they put them on their heels, right? With the, when they had the ball, it's like it's just a, it's just an, a, a dominating physical presence that like could get the Warriors back at their heels. So I don't know, but. Either way, uh, who does Celtics trade for anyone? They need to keep Rozier, in my opinion. Uh, last question. So, uh, yeah, the Celtics are having an interesting question, or a problem here because Rozier probably is a starter, and uh, you're going to have Kyrie back at a much bigger contract, and you probably can get 80% of Kyrie for half the money, uh, but they, they ain't going to trade Kyrie, right? No, and, and – <laughs> I don't think they're going to trade Hayward either. <laughs> oh, right. Because <laughs> a lot of people have thrown that out there. They're going to have to somehow um, convince all these guys who like just change their roles and accept it and know that they're going to win, maybe win a title. Yeah. Or, yeah. you know, you move Rozier and hope you hope to, to keep it rolling and get a bigger piece. But, yeah, I mean, remember, they also have a contract decision to make with Marcus Smart. He's a yeah. restricted free agent this summer. And they have a pick, right? A really good yeah, pick. Yeah, they, they could potentially have the second pick in the draft. Yeah, it's crazy. I love right. it. Well, awesome stuff, Dave. Great to be back with you. It's been too long again, but uh, we'll be here every night. There's a playoff game and uh, with, with you answering your questions on YouTube and on Periscope and on uh, this will be on a podcast if you want to hear the whole thing tomorrow morning, bright and early. So, Dave, thanks for being here. I'm glad you can uh, you can be here from San Antonio. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to be back. Back in action. All right. Well, don't forget, sports fans, at B-Ball Breakdown, we're not a channel. We're a conversation. You win. You win, Dave? Yes, I am.